Here we're going to discuss predicting the mechanism of an elimination reaction when you know elimination is occurring. This generally comes down to the strength of the base. We make a distinction, as we did in nucleophilic substitution, between weak bases and strong bases. Weak bases lack the electron donating power to deprotonate an alkyl halide at the beta position before the leaving group leaves. For this reason, they tend to engage in the E1 mechanism. They have to wait on the alkyl halide to expel its leaving group before they can deprotonate the carbocation intermediate. Strong bases, on the other hand, tend to engage in the E2 mechanism since they do have the strength to deprotonate at the beta position as the leaving group is departing. They don't need to wait for the leaving group to depart. One case that we won't discuss further, but that's important to keep in mind, is the case of primary alkyl halides, or pseudohalides, which can't engage in the E1 mechanism even in the presence of weak bases. That would result in the formation of a primary carbocation, which is a no-no. For this reason, substrates of this type engage exclusively in E2 elimination. If you look at the pKa of a proton and an alkyl halide beta to the carbon bearing the halide or pseudohalide, you'll find that they're actually not very acidic. And so, in general, to deprotonate at this position without forming some kind of much more electrophilic intermediate first, we need a strong base. Since this is exactly what happens in E2, deprotonation before the leaving group has departed completely, E2 requires a strong base. And it's important to understand what we mean exactly by basic conditions. What molecules are basic enough to engage in the E2 reaction? Well, these tend to be the anions of second row atoms, especially nitrogen and oxygen. So NR2- is often a great base. OR- is often a great base. Where these R groups or alkyl groups or hydrogens that don't engage in resonance with the atom bearing the negative charge. Of course, carbon ions are also very strong bases and can engage in this kind of reactivity as well. On the other hand, E1 requires reaction conditions that can support the formation of carbocations, that is, neutral or acidic reaction conditions. And the electrophile has to undergo D sub N to yield a secondary, tertiary, or resonance stabilized carbocation intermediate. Primary carbocations are not allowed. Here, something like a neutral alcohol is a nice neutral base that can participate in the E1 reaction. It serves both as a base and as a strongly polar solvent able to solvate and thereby stabilize the carbocation intermediate of this mechanism. The delta symbol here represents heat, and as we'll see, heat is often required in elimination reactions to promote elimination over substitution. We'll talk about why heat helps promote elimination in detail in a later lesson, but for the time being, as a teaser, notice that elimination forms three molecules, the conjugate acid of the base, conjugate base of the leaving group and the alkene, whereas substitution only forms two, the conjugate base of the leaving group and the product of linkage of the nucleophile and electrophile. 